Good evening, brothers and sisters. I just greet you in the name of our Lord and Jesus. Can you stand, please, as we begin our service? Father, today we just want to thank you. We just want to bless your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. You are mighty God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of hosts. Let's open, open our voices and begin to thank God. You know what you need to thank God for today. Begin to bless his holy name. You, God, God, you are a great God. Our Lord God, you have blessed us, Lord God. You have preserved us, Lord God. You have restored our health, Lord God. And Father, we just want to praise your name. We just glorify your name. We lift our voices unto you. Hallelujah to the risen God. Jesus, Adonai, we bless your name. Jehovah Rapha, we praise your name. Jehovah Shikinu, we bless you, Lord. We praise your name. Glory and honor to your name. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for city of freedom, for Dominion City, every member, Lord God, of Dominion City and city of freedom. Father, this evening we bring a person before you. And we just ask that you will continue to bless him, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in his life. We thank you, Lord God, for your anointing that is upon him. Thank you, Lord God, for surrounding him with your love like a sea. Father, we just want to bless you. We thank you for him. We thank you for his wife, Lord God, as you continue, Lord God, to bless her. We thank you, Lord God, for every leader, every member of City of Freedom and Dominion City. And Father, we bring our service before you. Your word said, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are here in the midst of us. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your word that will come forth, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are on their way that you will bring them safely. Father, Lord God, we ask you to continue to bless this nation. Father, we declare even in the rainy season and all the hail that we, hail some that we are having and the flood. We ask you, Lord God, to we declare over this nation that you will not flood this nation. We thank you, Lord God, for the school children. Uh, Lord, I know many uh, of the children do not have devices. And I just ask you, Lord God, to provide for them. So, Father, we just give you the praise. We give you the honor in the name of Jesus. Let's declare our covenant scripture. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Brothers and sisters, do you believe that, that God is able to stand before us all the days of our life. You know, sometimes we, we, we just say it because it's our covenant scripture. But begin to declare over you, despite what is happening in this nation and in nations of the world, God is standing before us in the name of Jesus. So I just want us to welcome Pastor Bashi as she leads us in worship. Thank you. God bless. Hallelujah. Let's just continue praising the Lord for what he has done for us. He is good all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to love you this evening. We just want to show our gratitude to you, O oh God, for keeping us, Lord, all these days, for keeping us from the beginning of this year, Lord, even this week, Lord. You have kept us, O oh God, and we thank you, O oh God, for your mercy, for your kindness and for your generosity towards us, O oh God. Father God, we just worship you today, O oh God. You are more precious than silver, Lord. You are more costly than gold. And Father, we just bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you are more precious than silver. And Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. There's nothing I desire compares with you. Lord, you are more precious 
cross and silver and lord you are more costly than gold lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and there's nothing i desire compares with you lord your love is wider than oceans and lord your love is deeper than seas lord your love encompasses the nations and there's nothing i want more inside of me oh lord you are more precious than silver and lord you are more costly than gold lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and there's nothing i desire compares with you lord your love is wider than oceans and lord your love is deeper than seas lord your love encompasses the nations and there's nothing i want more inside of me oh lord you are more precious than silver and lord you are more costly than gold oh lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and there's nothing i desire compares with you lord you are more precious than silver and lord you are more costly than gold lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and there's nothing i desire compares with you lord nothing i desire nothing i desire nothing i desire compares with you your name is alpha omega lift up your two hands and let us magnify the glorious God bow before his throne thanking him for the gift of life 
thanking him for all his benefit towards you, thanking him for loving you, for the price he paid on the cross. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for all his benefit which you are enjoying every day. Magnify his holy name. Exalt his holy name. Daddy in heaven, we thank you. King of kings, we exalt you. Thank you because you are God. And we bless your name. Lord, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And thy word cannot be broken. Thank you because you have been a faithful father. Thank you because even when men fail, God, you are always there. Thank you because you are not a man. We say, let your name alone be glorified. Holy Spirit, have your way. Reveal Jesus to every man in this service today. Take from Jesus. Give to me. Show me that I may show them. Give to me that I may give them as you have received from the Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And let the people shout a louder amen. amen. You may comfortably have your seat. And may the Lord bless you for coming out. God bless you. Welcome to our moment of truth. It's where Jesus is being taught. Where we learn Jesus. And where we hear Jesus. For we to behave like him follow after him, we must learn of him. We must hear him. Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. You know, there is nothing two ways about it and it's not something for we to say, eh. no, the most important thing is this. The voice you hear determines the sheep you are. Hello, the voice you hear determines the sheep that you are. But Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice. You can't hear Jesus and not behaving like Jesus. You can't hear Jesus not living like Jesus. Forget about it. When you hear Jesus, you will move like Jesus. He said, my sheep, they know me. They know me. They know me. So you cannot be in church without knowing him. You are not, you are not a sheep. You know, you know, sometimes we want to say this where we want it to please men and want men to live how they want to live, do whatever they want to do, and they still come to church and be comfortable. And they answer a Christian and sometimes they prophesy. Some, sometimes they say things that look like scripture. Or even sometimes they quote scriptures. But it's not in quoting scripture because the devil can quote scripture. But the only thing the devil cannot do, the devil cannot follow Christ. My sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. So today I am dealing on the part two of the love of of God function in the heart of believer. Part two. The love of God function in the heart of believer. And we said last week that a believer is a total makeup of the love of God. Somebody say total makeup. Somebody say total makeup. Every believer is a total makeup of the love of God. And I said that believers are a product of the love of God. Because we came out of love. We were born with love. You become a product of the material you are made, of, made up of. 
No man can be a product of the material he's not made up of. If you go to factories, for you to get a plastic rubber, it must be made up of plastic. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Bible says, Jesus was moving, doing good things, doing good works. Doing what? Good works. Healing the sea. So let's read. He said, for we are his workmanship, created. He didn't say create, but created. So which means even before we were born, we have been created in Christ. For many of us that are born again today. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, it will make you know. That we have been already created according to the, 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 the predestinate of God from the foundation of this world. So we are his workmanship created in Christ unto what? Good works which God had ordained. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are not permitted to walk outside of them. After today, power to manifest as God workmanship created in Christ will rest upon you. I say it will rest upon you. I say it will rest upon you. The baptism you need for the manifestation will rest upon you tonight. I say it will rest upon you tonight. So we see that a believer is a product of love. Because you came out of love. That is why the love of God is not feeling. That is the reason why the love of God is not emotional. The love of God is sacrificial. Because it is a love that he gave. John 3.16 for God so loved the world, He gave sacrificial, gave sacrificial. And we find out today that people in church, men and women of God, we sometimes don't sacrifice again. There is no sacrificial again. He just let me do it. If God was just the way we're behaving, do we think we have the liberty we have today? Come on, now. sometimes I ask myself, what kind of conscience does believers carry? No, no, we have time have come where we will say the truth. The first thing that the blood of Jesus does was to purge our conscience. Is our conscience being purged? For conscience sake. God loved the whole world. He do what? He gave his only begotten son. Number one, that whosoever believeth in him should not be perished, but have everlasting life. Love is a sacrificial thing. It's not a feeling. It is not an emotional. That is the reason why 95% of divorce, even in church or outside there, is because it is emotional. Any divorce today starts by I love you. True of us. <laughs> no marriage that suffering defeat today or suffering divorce today that started by I know you. It started by I love you. It started by emotional feelings. It started by feelings. But it didn't start by, by knowing. But it started by doing what? Love. And that is the reason why that God wants you to be a product of him. And how can we be a product of God? Let me tell you something. No man have ever loved God. 
Even now, do you think you love God? We, we, we need the answer. Even now, do we think we love God? If we love God, you, you will not get space here. If we love God, we will not get space here. Hey, God, somebody. God love you that he is there every day. My God, somebody hear me. God love you for his promise say, I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. And the same Bible said, do not forsake the gathering. So where is your love? God say one I will not leave you I will not forsake thee that's what God said why because of his love the same Bible tell you do not forsake the gathering of his people that's the assembly. God that love you and say he will not forsake you. And he himself tell you, don't forsake my gathering, you know. And you're forsaking the gathering. Show me your love. Ah, uh, sacrificial. Sacrificial. So whatever you are doing, you could have laid one hour for God. Cannot be too much for whatever you're doing. You know, sometimes you ask people who wake you up in the morning. And they will say, God, it's not God. It's your job that wake you up. <laughs> it's your business that wake you up. Because if it's not your business, you will be on the bed sleeping. You will even be in the bed sleeping and you will not even wake up to pray. Ask yourself, tell yourself, let's, let's, let's talk about the truth. How many times have you wake up by 4.30 on Saturday? I love that. Anytime you shout Holy Ghost, I don't like it so much. <laughs> How many... <laughs> <laughs> How many times have a believer wake up by 4.30 in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning for communion with God? On Monday, what time do you wake up? So you will tell me what wake you up. Because you have to go to work. <laughs> Not because you want to pray. But if you can do it the day that you cannot go to work, come on. It becomes sacrificial love. Now, let me show you something. Talking about the love of God, God say, when you go to the book of Romans chapter 5, we read verse 4 and verse 5. Roman, all right, let's start from the book of, let's start from the Old Testament. We're going to start from the Old Testament. Because we cannot love God until God love us first. No unbeliever can tell you you love God. Because he don't have the love of God. God has to put his love in you for you to love him. If not that, no man can love God. We are going to prove it. We are going to do what? Prove it from the scriptures. Until God put his love in you. You can't love him back. Let's go. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6. Let's look at this. will he circumcise thy heart and the heart of the seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest do what? Live. It is him doing it. So don't boast, it's you. The only thing you do that you disobey him when you say, I love you, love me back. You tell him, no, not today. I can do it tomorrow. What did he do? He will circumcise your heart and he will 
will do what? He will put the heart, he will put and the heart of thy seed to do what? To do what? To love the Lord. So there is something he will put in you to do what? To love himself back. If not, no man can love God. Everybody will be behaving the way they behave. Even in him circumcising your heart, planting a seed for you to love him, we are still stubborn. We are still unstable. Talking about when the seed is not there. When we move in the feeling of loving a woman or loving a man, you can travel from here to Guaya Guayari just to see the person. Chris is true. True. You know one thing? God is giving me some radical children. Very, very, very soon. You people will see what will happen. Very, 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 very soon. There are some radical children God is sending in this church. That even the old ones will be overtaken. Sorry. But it's better to say it now. So that when it starts, you will never stand by the door to stand to, for the door to close. For people not to come. Or for people not to go out. Instead, we will go push you out. Because you cannot be a hindrance. It is not in how many years you have been in church. Mm -mm, it doesn't work. It is by revelation that you catch. And tonight, you will, you will encounter the revelation of love. You will encounter the revelation of love. So, which means the heart of man was not circumcised. What does God do? God circumcised your heart. And the heart of thy seed to love him. <laughs> so when you look at it, it is not even we. We do nothing. The problem, the only thing we do him is when it comes for we to sacrifice, we say no. But whatever it needs to do it has been given to us. But because we are in comfort zone, for we to return back, that love will become a problem. God have every right to withdraw Jesus from dying. The same way somebody's cry can stop you. <laughs> The same way you are crying can stop you from sacrificially doing something for God. The same way you are feeling or your emotion can stop you from sacrificing from God. God could have filled that emotion and stopped Jesus from dying. I don't know whether you're getting me now. God could have had the feelings and say, how will I allow a right... Come on, somebody not hearing me. How will I allow a righteous man to die for the unrighteous? He could have... When Jesus cried and cried and said, Father, Father, he said, if this cup... He said, take away this cup. He cried. But nevertheless, if it is thy will... Jesus cry again, a lie, a lie, la sabatan. Why me? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? God could have changed his mind in those feelings, which every one of us could have do. But because it's oh my God, because it's a God that love, not by feeling. Because it's God that love, not by emotion, but he loves sacrificially. He said, what I said, I said, I can't change my mind. And that is a, come on, Agabagada, that is the reason why God could have used Abraham to preach the gospel that you're hearing today. That is the reason why God could have preached to Abraham what you are seeing today. Because Abraham was a sacrificial man. Number one, Genesis chapter 12. Abraham, leave your father's country. Leave your mother. Leave everything you are doing to a place where I will show you. He never showed him the place. It's a sacrificial movement. He 
is what? A sacrificial movement. It is a movement that looks like you are stupid. Me telling you right now, leave your business. Leave everything you are doing. Follow me. I will show you. Go to a place where I will show you. will tell pastor. You have to tell me the place. Let me know what I like the place first. What kind of job am I going to get there when I go there? Two of us. But Abraham, not looking at what will I do there, he follow. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, from today, let your love compare me to obey you in the name of Jesus. Let your love compare my heart to follow after you are divine leading in the name of jesus abraham followed after divine leading and god was watching him he left time for promise god promised him i am going to give you a son in as much he make a mistake but did you know those things that those things that happen That son came. Now, you know, I ask myself a question. Did you know that if Abraham have never gotten the first son, Abraham could have not be, he might not be able to say, God, take him. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> if Abraham have not gotten Ishmael, <laughs> remember, in the book of Genesis chapter 22, what God asked, God say, you are only son. But Isaac was not the only son. <laughs> so, which means, if Isaac was not there, Abraham might not be able to obey. But when God called Abraham, he said, I need that your son that you have, the only begotten son, that beloved son, I need him. God was trying, preaching to Abraham what he will do. As you give your only begotten son, I have my only begotten son to give, to redeem you from the problem that you cause. Because it is in Abraham that the law and grace came out. You know, people think that the law came out, came out with Moses. No, it is through Abraham that the law and, Moses, the law and grace came out. Ishmael represents the law. Moses was grace. Um, Isaac was grace. So in one man, the law <coughs> and the grace came out of one man. But because of the law, because of the law, God declared to Abraham that you will be the heir. Because of his love, can I tell you something? May you never fail your generation in ignorance. That is one of the problems we have in today. And that is the reason why generations are dying every day. Generations are being destroyed every day. Because we fail our generations to come. Abraham could not fail his generation. By the reason of Abraham's obedience. That is why he is born again today. By the reason of Abraham's love. That is the reason why you are born again today. Because God told him, go to the book of go to the book of Genesis chapter twenty-two. Genesis chapter twenty-two. Let's look about this. Genesis chapter twenty-two. Genesis chapter twenty-two. Genesis twenty-two. Give me from verse. Um, give me from verse. Um, verse ten. Uh, you know the story. Let me start from verse ten because I just out of. Uh, Touch some scriptures. And Abraham set forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
And the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Next verse. He said, and he said, lay not thy hand upon the Lord. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now, somebody say for now, come on. For now, Malagabaga, what you will do that will make God to use the word for now, I know it must be love. For now, I know that that fearest God. Now I know that thou fearest God. You know, when you look at the Old Testament, they use more of fear. Fear. Because that is what they understand as love. Hello? That is what they understand by love. When Jesus came, Jesus tell you, for God, have not given you the spirit of what? Fear. <laughs> so what they understand as love is fear. But we understand fear as love. Again, it will work. Don't bother yourself. It will work out. You will understand it. Is God a monster? So why would I fear God? If God told me, he has not given me. When God was in the book of Genesis, did you hear anything about fear? When God was, was talking in the book of Genesis, he didn't bring no fear. What brings fear? It is the devil that brings fear. God was love from the beginning. When you, when you love God, you don't need to fear him. Sorry. When you love God, what does he mean? Did you know that fear is a torment? Sometimes you will fear somebody and you end up in error. The law was like fear. The law was putting fear in people and people was making the worst mistake. Now, when you love God, you can't hate your enemy. But you can fear God and see hate your enemy. Why? Because the love is not here. What you have is fear. When you love God, when you love God, you cannot speak evil against somebody. Let me ask you something. When you have children in the house and their children love you, do you know it's very easy for you that your children fear you? Eh? Throw us. When your children love you, you know, I, 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 I look. <laughs> when your children love you, it is very easy to grow children than when children fear you. And can I tell you something? If you're a man, the easiest way to raise your children is to love their mother. Write it somewhere. Write it somewhere. The easiest way to love, to raise your children, is to love your wife. If you don't love your wife, you can never raise a better child. God bless you. If you don't love your wife, you can never raise a better child. You will raise monsters. And it becomes easy for you to raise children when you love their mother. You don't know the weapon that the love carries. Hey, you don't know the weapon in love. You don't know the weapon in love. When you love your mother, you raise the, you raise the, raise the better children. You raise no, raise no monster. When your children love you and they love your children, what you tell them don't do, they don't do it. 
But when the children fear you, they obey you in your present and they dishonor you and disobey you in your absence. When your children love you, they take instruction from you. They obey it in present and in the absence. But when they fear you, they take instruction from you in what? Up in your present and in your absence. They say he's not there. Are we talking about love? Are we talking about love? We miss a lot. Because we we'll never see the power in love. How can you tell me if you are God? Why love made perfect that you may have boldness in the day of judgment? That as he is, so I am. You can, if you are a man that fear God, you cannot stand on the word to say as he is, so you are. We're talking about to see love. Let us stop seeing God as a monster. God is not a monster. It's not a monster. We're talking about love. The one person that gives you his love. Give me Second Corinthians. Give me Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Second Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we all are die. We all are what? That one person. That, what, that's what we call love. No love is greater than this for a man to lay down his life. For his friends. For his friends. Come on. That's what we're talking about. The only way you can respond to him is to love. Listen, let me tell you When you love God, nothing will be too hard for you to give. When you love God, nobody can preach about it to you. You know what is right. When you're coming from church, when you're coming from home, you package your tithe to home. When you love God. You don't come to church and begin to ask, oh God, give me an envelope. Because you bring out $100, that is not even your tithe to give. <laughs> you don't love God. If your tithe is 1000 and when you come to church, uh, tithe, uh, your offering tithe, you rush, uh, give me an envelope in the hand. They give you, and you just put hand, squeeze out 200 and put their right in You are a thief. You never pay your tithe. You don't love God. Don't love God. It is something you're supposed to do what? Prepare it for home. Put it in the envelope. When you walk in, you know it is settled. Before even they talk about it, you raise it up. Because you love him. Yeah, because you love him. So when we're looking at this, we look about that we are the product of his love. The product of his love. First John chapter 4. Okay. Romans, Romans chapter 5. Give me verse 5. Romans 5, 5. Remember that he circumcised our hearts. He do what? He circumcised our hearts and the heart of our seed for we to do what? Love him. Now look at this. And you hope, make it not ashamed because the love of God is do what? Sheared abroad. We are in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which, give, which is given unto us. This is what makes you to love God. Because His love is shared in your heart. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. That's why you love Him. That's why you love Him. A man who doesn't have the Holy Ghost can never tell you love God. God didn't give you love. He have already, he have already provided love for you to accept to love Him. If you are not born again, you don't love God. Because you don't have what it takes to love him back. What it takes to love him back is the Holy Ghost. Which is the seed that he has already planted in your heart. For you to love him back.
First John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17, 18, and 19. Now, let's look at this. Herein, everybody listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Herein. Is it not say we are unto? He said, we are here in. Here in is our love. Inside something, our love is made perfect. Oh my God. Inside Christ, our love is made what? Perfect. That we, Lege Bogaba, you can fear God and have boldness. <laughs> you can fear God and have boldness. Two of you become a monster. Because nobody can fear bold, nobody can fear a monster to become bold. Many of you sometimes, you go into work, you are you shaking, 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 because you have a boss that is a monster. You have a supervisor that is a monster. Three of us, as soon as you hear his voice, if you want to write Pastor Kenneth coming to church, you write another name. Why? Because you hear his name coming. <laughs> hey! Because you hear his name. Because you are living in fear. But he said, herein is our law made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we. Nothing is none different between us and him. As he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. Next verse. There is no fear. We are in love. So when love came in, fear disappeared. <laughs> when love steps in, fear disappeared. When Christ, who is love, came in, fear disappeared. There is our love made perfect in the day of what? Judgment. That we might be what? Bold. As he is, so are we so it is our love that love of Christ cast out fear. There is no fear in love. No fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear because fear has what torment. He that feareth. God, he that feareth is not made perfect. We are in love. May you be made perfect in love. I say, may you be made perfect in love. From today, you will be perfect in love. Any man that feareth is not perfect in love. You cannot sleep if the light is not on. You are afraid of darkness? The love of God is not perfect in you. Something is wrong with you. Have you forgotten that it's in darkness you shine very well? If there is no, if there is no light, you, nobody will know. Nobody will know your strength. If there, is no light, if there is no light, nobody will know you. Nobody, if there is no darkness, nobody will recognize you. Because it is in darkness that when you appear, when your light shines, darkness disappears. And you are now afraid of darkness. Because your love is not made perfect. A, a born again Christian, something going in, in your zinc. You are afraid because the love is not perfect. Now we're talking about love. Love. Some people, you come out in the morning, you see something in your house, hello, you're running up and down. Where's the love? Come on. Come on. It's because men are not being rooted in the love of God. That is why there is too much suspicious and we give him the devil the power he never even have. We hand him over the power he never have. Give me next verse. We love him because he first 
loved us. <laughs> we love him because he first loved us. What did he do? He loved us and put his love in us that we will love him back. After all, who loved God? Let me show you. Let me show you why this God, you don't play with him. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16. Isaiah 59, verse 16. This is when we're talking about love. We're talking about love. We talk about love, you don't play with that. What did this say? And he saw that there was no man. And wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. When he see, nobody could have done it for you. When he see, nobody could have prayed for you. Nobody could have interceded for you. Nobody could have stand there for you. What did he do? He take over to stand there for you. He take over to make Christ your intercessor. He take over. He provided his salvation. He provided his deliverance because of his love. When no man, he said, and there was no man. Even if he said man, it's okay, maybe you can fire a man. If he said man, you can. But no man, nobody was found. And wondered that there was no inter. Nobody can say, God, please do, God, please don't do this. God, do this for them. Nobody. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him. That is the God who is. He, listen, can I tell them? It is a self made. Nobody made him. Nobody tell him what he do. You are privileged to be a vessel. Don't play with it. You are privileged to be what? A vessel. He can use anything. He can. Have you ever seen three clapping? You never see three clapping? You are not alive. You never see three clapping? You never see three worshiping God? Let breeze blow and see how three worship God. But when you come to church, people stand like a Hindu God in church. But three. Breeze, can I tell you something? Breeze, when breeze blowing, that is their worship. Hey, Yakatalaba. When the breeze blowing, that is the worship of the tree. The tree will begin to worship the God. But when people come to church, when you praise him, they stand like Hindu God. Who doesn't talk? The only time they talk is when they have a need. Or when they want to talk some babbling talk. You understand? Talk some old talks. Or when they want to play some stupidness. That's when they want to talk and rejoice. But when they come to church, they pin their leg down, pin their hands up, even to open mouth and praise God. It's a problem. But the same people, if you see where they're cursing home, if you see where they're cursing on the road, you will say, is it the same mouth that cannot be able to open in church? Where is your love? I will continue next week. The Bible says, come back to your first love. I know you cannot reach your neighbor. And I know, even if you spray your two hands, you can't touch your neighbor here. But I want you to point to your neighbor and say, your neighbor, come back to your first love. Where you are, even if you stand up to add your two hands, you can't even touch your neighbor. But you can point to your neighbor and say, come back to your first love, which is Jesus. Stand up on your feet. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a product of love. Give me the grace. Give me the grace to function in love from today. In the name of Jesus. Herein 
is the love make perfect i decree and i declare my love in christ the love of christ for me is being made perfect from today for perfect love cast out fears in the name of jesus so every fear every dream in my life every torment in my life from today the love is made perfect i cast you out in the name of jesus and the bible says and the light shineth and darkness comprehended it not in the name of jesus as i appear fear will disappear as i appear darkness will disappear for my love is made perfect you stole the bible do you know something <laughs> i will say this and i will close and as this hit you you can shout amen like thunder if this hit you I read my Bible very well. I never see no cure for fear. <laughs> I read my Bible very well. I have never seen no cure for fear. The only place I saw a cure for fear was in love. Shout a louder amen. <laughs> hey! It is only in fear that I saw a kill for only in love. I saw a kill for fear. It's a perfect love. Bundle fear out. Perfect love. Mash up fear. Perfect love. Spit out fear. Perfect love. Cause fear. Perfect love. Oh God, overlook fear perfect love may your love be made perfect from today may the hand of god be upon you may your love for god grow i say 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 grow the so somebody put your two hands in your heart in their chest because that surgery you need now can you give me, can you give me that scripture? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Give me that scripture. Let that be a circumcision right now in somebody's heart. Let the Lord circumcise your heart. Let the Lord, he said, and the Lord shall do what? Circum Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. He said, and the Lord thy God will do what? Circumcise the what? Thy heart. I want you to pray, say, Father, in your love, circumcise my heart that I will love you. 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 For there is no fear in love. I speak over your life from today. Let your love life for Jesus be ignited. I say, let your love life for Jesus be ignited. I say, let your love life for Jesus be ignited. The fire of love in your heart will no more go down. The fire of love in your heart will be on increase from henceforth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus, everybody.